Hello, everybody. Welcome to Movement Monday. So today's Movement Monday is about the movement of the eyes. That's it. Me looking side to side, up and down or all around. <laughs> My suggestion to you to be sure that your students are not falling into the trap of what's called an ocular lock, if you want the fancy word, but really it just means staring. <laughs> Staring is not just about the eyes. When I lock around my eyes, I tend to lock in my jaw, which is gonna lock the top of the neck. And if you've been watching these, you know, mm, that's gonna lock up most of the spine into the pelvis and then even the feet. So staring while thinking is really common and not that helpful. So when you wanna check and make sure that your students not just aren't staring, but are not compensating with getting away with a staring type feel, even though they might look a little bit like they're not staring, but there's still tension in there is basically what I'm saying. Not a full on stare, but still tension. Then ask them to do things and move their eyes around. There's actually a whole therapy system about the power of moving our eyes around. And that can actually help to integrate the brain. Okay, so if you've been following my work, you know, whether you've taken the Missing Link course yet, I hope you do soon if you haven't yet, <laughs> It's all about integration and eye movements can help to integrate you. So let's say I'm balancing in a parallel retire and I wanna make sure I'm not gripping everything that I don't need to and that I'm gaining strength doing that movement, particularly a held movement like a balance, but without compensations, take your balance, stay there for eight counts, look up and down and side to side. Do eyeball choreography add that, you're also going to get students to get a little bit more, you know, flirty and expressive. I know from a distance, sometimes you're just going to get the flash of the whites of the eyes. And so there's certain eye movements we're not going to do. We're going to want to actually use the head. But still, when somebody moves their eyes just a little bit, they can't help but get into the nuanced movements. You know, maybe my shoulder is supposed to come forward just a little bit if I'm doing a flirty moment. It matters, it's, it's that personal style that comes out. So we've got to get these eyeballs moving. And you know, staring at a screen, something this small means that even if they're scanning, the range of scanning is so small, their eye muscles are getting out of shape. So here you are helping to get all their muscles in shape, include the eyes in that. It'll help them to really realize if they're balancing or not, and it'll help eradicate some compensations and it will also do wonders for them of keeping healthier eyes. Maybe you'll prevent them from getting glasses someday. Yeah. And as you know, because in some of these videos you see it, I'm wearing glasses or I wear glasses or contacts. So avoiding that, oh, I wish I'd had that when I was younger. I'm working on it. Maybe one day I'll be able to tell you all that I've turfed my glasses for good. My brain gym teacher has quite the story about the improvement of his vision, so it's possible. All right, so let's get those eyeballs moving, eliminating compensations and staring and bringing back that range and bringing in the nuances that happen often when I just change my eyes and my whole sort of persona can change with it. Okay, so that's your movements. All right, see you on the next one. Bye all. I'll be looking down for your comments. Haha, uh -huh, couldn't resist. <laughs> Bye.